there is a very high likelihood that I will get some of this lipstick on my teeth at some point in this video. Just fair warning. Believe it or not, it has been almost 10 months now since I moved to France definitively. It's really weird to think about actually because sometimes it feels like just yesterday and then other times it feels like I've been here for years. So I haven't quite figured out how I feel about it, but the fact of the matter is it's been almost 10 months. So because it's been so long now, I decided it would be a great time to do this video, which is one that I've sort of been wanting to do for a while now. French things that I haven't quite adapted to yet. <laughs> Obviously, there are a lot of differences between typical French and typical American culture and some things are very easy to adapt to even if they are quite different, but other things are not so much. Being married to a French national means that I haven't really just come here and lived in my own bubble and only gotten French culture when I'm out and about. I've actually really been immersed in a lot of different parts of French culture and I think that's really cool, but it also sort of makes it very obvious the things that are still not comfortable for me and things that I can't adapt to. The first one I definitely did discover when I got here. I was not aware of it at all beforehand, but it's a little something I like to call French time. Maybe it's my German heritage or maybe it's just because I'm a very organized person, but I like to be on time for everything. In France though, there is this thing called quart d'heure de politesse and basically that means quarter of an hour of politeness, so a polite 15 minutes maybe you would say in English. And basically it means you're not supposed to show up to private events, so events with friends and family and not work but anything else. You're supposed to show up 15 minutes late. I discovered this first with my husband's family. I would be looking at the clock like we need to go, we need to go because we're supposed to be there at let's say 7, but my husband would say no. If they said 7 they want you there at 7.15. <laughs> this can vary a little bit from region to region according to him. Sometimes it's about 5 or 10 minutes, other regions it's closer to 30 and if you don't respect this people actually get very flustered and they can get very frustrated about that because it's just considered very unusual and kind of rude. For me in the US this is something that might vary by region but definitely where I came from and everybody that I knew you kind of you showed up on time you could show up maybe five minutes before to five minutes after but showing up more than five minutes after you were late. It was okay I mean obviously for, for private events and stuff it's not that taboo but it's late. So yes this is something I still cannot adjust to I still cannot get my brain around it and when someone tells me seven, my brain just wants to be there at seven. The next thing is cheek kissing, which most people probably know about. In France, you cheek kiss usually typically once on each cheek, but some regions will have different ones like maybe three or four, but the typical most common cheek kiss is just once on each cheek. I've been doing this for years, long before I moved here, but obviously I have to do a lot more when I'm actually here, and I still can't feel natural doing it. I do it obviously because it's extremely rude not to and I, I don't really have a problem with it. It's not a big deal even though that's something that I never did growing up but it's just not natural. I still feel awkward doing it. It's a sort of intimacy that you don't really get with new people in the US. This is especially evident when it's a big group so when you show up and there's 20 other people there you basically have to just make your rounds and cheek kiss everybody and say hello even if again you've never met them. They're just friends of friends or family, friends of family and that to me is extremely extremely awkward. I still don't quite know what to do with myself. I still have a little bit of, of adjusting to do before that becomes natural. Another thing I just cannot get used to in France is opening windows all the time. I know this applies to a lot of other European countries as well, but it definitely does not apply to most places in the US. What I grew up used to was a house, so it was a much bigger space, so you didn't really need to ventilate as much. And in the summertime and in the hotter months, you had AC, so you didn't have to open the windows to, you know, fan out the house or anything. If you did decide to open your windows to let some fresh air in on a nice day, then you had screens on the windows. So you could leave them open all you wanted, but you wouldn't get flies, you wouldn't get a bunch of gnats, you wouldn't get mosquitoes when the sun is down. You just avoided all of those horrible things in your house like you don't get in France because in my experience so far, there are no screens on the windows and there's not AC in most places. So that means, especially in the hotter months when you don't have AC, you gotta open your windows, you have to kind of fan the place out, you get tons of bugs in the apartment or the house and I am not really great with bugs. And it's probably just because I grew up where I, when I went outside I had to deal with that, but I could always come back inside and that was safe from, you know, being eaten alive by mosquitoes all night, which is what I'm experiencing right now. In fact, you can see in some of my last videos, I have like bug bites on my arms a lot of times when I show my arms in videos. <laughs> That's a summer thing, because I have to leave the windows open. And until my blood somehow becomes less tempting to mosquitoes, I'm just gonna be eaten alive. It doesn't matter how many people I'm around, if I'm around anybody else, the mosquitoes will still come for me. 
every time. Next are very, very long meals. So I think I've mentioned this in a video before. I've definitely mentioned it on Twitter or Instagram or someplace on social media. But in France, the typical meal time, I can't even really say, I guess, an exact time, but it's extremely long. Several hours for a meal is definitely not unusual in France. In the US, definitely for special occasions, meals can be a couple of hours, but a typical meal, I would say, is probably about an hour. When you're done eating, the meal's over, and you typically, in my experience, will move away from the table, go sit on a couch and chat, or you'll at least clean up the table and you know maybe chat afterward but the meal is over in France things are a little bit more coarse like you have an aperitif which is a drink before the meal and you have snacks with that and then you have the sometimes starter but a lot of times if it's not really a special occasion you have the main meal you eat that and then you clean it up and then you have cheese and then you clean it up and then you have dessert <laughs> so yeah it's a little bit longer because there are more things going on but also just the time that you spend during each one of those stages is very long I'm getting a little bit better and a little bit more used to this but I still find myself sort of like checking the time every so often and sort of getting antsy. I don't like to sit in one place for that many hours. While we're talking about food, another thing that I have not adapted to is strong cheese. Obviously everybody knows France is very well known for having very, very strong cheeses and there are plenty of mild cheeses to choose from as well. But on a cheese platter, there's going to be some sort of strong cheese on the plate, maybe a couple, and you're going to smell them and people use the same knives for all the different cheese usually. So there might be a little bit of that, you know, smelly moldy cheese on the knife. It's really impossible to avoid the strong cheeses. And I just still, my taste buds just haven't adapted. I can't do it yet. I'm hoping that I'll be able to sort of get used to it and adjust to it. But right now the really smelly cheeses are just a little bit revolting to be honest. The last thing on this list is going to make me sound like a very classic American, but I cannot get used to the fact that you can be walking around any city, a tiny little town, a little village, and you can just happen upon a really old building. There are so many places, especially like in the Loire region, which I've spent a lot of time there. It can be a tiny village that nobody wants to even visit and nobody does visit, but it has its own castle. And a lot of times they're in really good shape. It's just absolutely mind blowing to me. And I kind of thought that maybe after being here for a while, I get used to it, but no. It's, it's still mind blowing. I just, I cannot get my head around the fact that I am living amongst so much history and I'm just everyday life is around so much history. I could probably fill this list up with so many other things, but those are the six that I found the most interesting and I'm gonna stop there so that I don't drag this out so much longer. <laughs> if you guys enjoy this video, most likely I will try and do it again, maybe in a year's time or something and just sort of bring this back and figure out what I still have yet to adapt to and what I'm still working on. Let me know in the comments if you have ever lived in a different country, what are some things that you had trouble adapting to? And if you've lived in France specifically, I would love to know if you shared any of these things with me as well. And I would just like to point out that I don't think I've gotten this lipstick on my teeth this entire video, at least that I've noticed. So maybe in editing I'll find a, a horrible surprise. As always, thank you guys all so much for watching, and I will see you soon in another video.